¿Qué pasó? We got work to do. Enabling the COVID-19 recovery digitally. I hope that when you are watching this video, you and all of yours are safe and healthy. Because that's priority number one. I want to begin by thanking the members of the ISLA Conference Committee and especially Guillermo Rodriguez for the invitation to give this keynote presentation. And thank you for watching this video. I am Ramiro Montealegre and I am an associate professor at the Lead School of Business at the University of Colorado Boulder. What crazy, crazy times we are living in. This pandemic has clearly shocked and demonstrated the inefficiency that already existed in health systems, not only in Latin America, but around the world. But of course, the health system was not the only one that was shocked. Many other industries like tourism and sport and entertainment, retailing, food services, and many more. In the first phase of the pandemic, what it was important is to stay home to protect the most vulnerable citizens. But at the same time, there was a need to go out and work because we were not making money. We saw demonstrations taking place around the world in different cities. But we also saw changes in our customers. Many of them didn't want or couldn't leave their homes, fearing infections simply from being near other people. Starting around March, in many countries, were issued this state of calamity, and we had to lock ourselves into our house. It was really like the lights were turned off. Our homes became a multifunctional refuge, and changes took place in the way that we interact with our loved ones, the way we did work and learn, got medical care, spent leisure time, and conducted many of our daily transactions of life. And when the lockdown ends and the lights go on again, surely we are not going to return to the same place. Because we had to reorganize to make space for other family members, including the little ones. Everyone had to continue to fulfill their obligations, needs, and wishes. And the same thing is true in relation to our companies. After the lockdown, we are finding populations with very different needs and wants. Surely, our level of resources might have changed. Maybe we'll have less staff than before. The amount of money could also be different. And the concern over the time lost as we were forced to stop earning money is crucial. Furthermore, it is likely that our company's operations, processes, and structures that have allowed us in the past to generate value for our companies and our customers may be out of sync with today's reality. While it was not a welcome shock to the world, COVID-19 also showed the potential of digital technology as a great enabler. Online shopping, remote work and learning, and even telehealth in some countries became widespread. 
online entertainment and gaming also gain a significant traction. Individuals and companies move more starkly than ever to embrace both the virtual and the physical work arrangements. Some trends that were expected to unfold over several years took hold in a matter of weeks. For example, here in the US, you know, many supermarkets used to have salad bars in the entrance to the supermarket. So people could take their salad or create a deli for lunch or dinner. But they began to understand through business analytics the type of products that customers were buying. And they transformed these salad bars into bars, right? Like in this picture, right? Where people can get immediately, you know, their favorite candy, beer, drinks. They also transform all their salad bar into bars of hygiene and healthy products, which is what people were buying. In England, what's very interesting, this bar. One of the problems that they have is, you know, having a clerk in the bar and, and having the social distance and the, so, so what they did is they use Internet of Things and cloud computing, and therefore they, 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 they organize the bar as a buffet system in which, you know, based on the amount of drink that you were taking, in the moment that you get to the, pay, the, to the payment station, it will tell you exactly how much you had to pay, and then with a, a contactless payment system, you're able to do it without having to have a physical person. In Latin America, for example, this company Rappi in Colombia try in different cities using robot delivery system to provide food services. These changes accelerated the migration to digital technologies at a stunning scale and speed across every sector, bolstering at least five years forward in digital adoption, according to some estimation. But let's be clear, it would be a huge mistake, however, to think that COVID-19 brought the end of the traditional non-digital enabled fabric of our societies. Because even industries and companies that were innovative during the pandemic and were able to survive the downturn, including those that were vital to our economic systems during the pandemic, will face a critical period of adjustment. This is exactly what happens every time that there is a major crisis, a period of creative destruction, as called by economist Joseph Schumpeter. This is a cycle where the crisis causes declining industries and marginally successful business models to disappear faster than they would have if the economy had continued to grow. Nonetheless, as a Stanford economist Paul Roman remind us, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. Because a crisis is a moment that gives us an opportunity to shift and reset our strategy. So, what do we know to be true? The first thing is yes. The world witnessed an increased use of digital technology that was manifested in the extensive reliance of much of our activities throughout the pandemic. And yes, it is likely that digital will also play a defining role in the pandemic recovery. But of course, it is still too early to predict which of the temporary digital shifts that happened during the, the pandemic 
will hold over time. But this poses the need to understand how it is digital will impact the recovery after the pandemic. And this is a beautiful question for scholars in IS, strategy, and management. And the good news is that while well, companies have to, to be inventive and adaptive in the responses during the pandemic, we are not moving entirely into uncharted territory. In fact, prior to pan the pandemic, many companies around the world have shifted already in order to better compete in an environment that was characterized by more customer centricity, complexity, dynamic, and the use of technology. And research has followed many of these initiatives. And in that process, they embarked into digital technology-enabled changes that is a process termed digital transformation. During the pandemic, many companies joined those companies that pre-pandemia have already started to do digital transformation. And we can be assured that more companies will continue to do so into the post-pandemic years. And to be sure, because this concept of digital transformation have been used very broadly. Here, what we are defining it is following Vidal 2019 as a process that aims to improve an entity by triggering significant changes to its properties through the combination of information, computing, communication, and connectivity technology. And of course, the importance of taking stock of what we know already about digital transformation, plus shedding more light on what is unique about the post-COVID recovery phenomenon, underscore the need to expand the research agenda in the topic of digital transformation. And I can think of at least these key questions that need to be investigated. First, why the new normal triggered different transformation in firms and in different countries, in Colombia, in Mexico, in Brazil, in Guatemala? What are the key drivers of this digital transformation in firms according to the immediate environment in these different societies? Third, how these drivers may, under some circumstances, alter the structure, the strategy, the culture, competencies, skills, and technology that are being used by, fir by firms. And of course, it also is limited only by our imagination, open questions related to the trajectories of different digital transformation journeys that companies will follow in these different countries and regions of the world. But let's be clear, when the lockdown and quarantines are over and the lights are on again. Our temptation as researcher is to go with all the energy to catch these beautiful new opportunities to do research. But let's be careful. This could be like a soccer player who for 85 minutes was sitting in the bench and when the coach finally said, you are on the game, right? You try to do everything. You know, 
a good soccer player spend the time that is in the bench not to be anxious, but to be observing how the dynamics of the game, who's playing well in both teams, the defense, the position they are play. Same thing is true for us. Now that we are still in our homes and you know slowly going back to the new normal, is the time that we should begin to analyze and reflect on what are the trends that are happening around us and what requires more understanding of our curiosity. So instead of jumping like this soccer player in the last five minutes, we should have a clear research strategy that includes taking the time that we need now to understand why do I do what I do? How do I want to get there? And what do I need to do? So let's go one by one. In answering the why I do what I do, yes, it is clear that in Latin America, like in the rest of the world, digital technology play a crucial role in keeping our society functional through the pandemic. So this could be an interesting opportunity for us Latin America academics to contribute to research because people are going to be worried about what's happening in Europe, in China, in the US, but we understand Latin America, this can be the opportunity to contribute to that. But we should be careful in not over-focusing on the publish and perish paradigm, that narrow mindset. Because the truth is, we have a much bigger opportunity here. We can contribute with knowledge, with interesting studies, with interesting new practices that we can bring to our classrooms with undergrads that are going to be the next generation of managers in this post-pandemic. With our MBAs who are just going to graduate to be in this new world. In executive education that needs now knowledge to understand how to help in this moment that is happening around them. And of course, there is more questions that answer at this point. And that's our contribution that goes beyond just publishing an academic paper. If you think about it, yes, as we talked before, this digital transformation took place in many countries around the world. But in Latin America, the truth is, it has been much slower. And in many companies, we are still using technology just for efficiency and productive that have created an stagnation, right? We are happy with the status quo because if it's not broken, why change it? A good example of that is a supermarket. Right? And I love this picture because it's a historical picture. Maybe one day when you show a picture like this to your grandchild, it's going to say, wow, this is interesting. I didn't know that when you wanted to buy something when you were growing up, you had to play train with other human be beings close to you. And I don't know about you, but I always felt that I was the caboose because I was at the end of this train that I had to be there to pay for what I wanted to do. Why did we used to do that? Right, because in the 70s, the technology that we have was point of sales that people had to go through scanning and having somebody there for you to say what you were going to get. But the truth is, 
with the technology that we have available, and we have available even before the pandemic, these lines were not interesting. And this was not just the problem with supermarkets, right? I mean, when I remember seeing these type of environments in Latin America, you know, we make lines to go to the bank and to have transportation. Everywhere you can see lines. And of course, during COVID-19, people began and companies began to discover and solving problems for the emergency. People could buy online and it can tell you when your food was ready so you can pick it up in a, a, a curbside, right? And it was individual examples of this. But the truth is, now that we see different societies, different countries starting to come back to the normality, right? What I see is the same design, but now following the new social distances norms, right? Here in this picture, you can see that the same line that was done before in this supermarket, but now following the social distancing and paying attention that there is only so many people that go inside the supermarket. But of course, the question that I have is, why in the world do you need to do a physical line? You could do this digital already, right? And, and you can go and use your phone or a website and tell exactly when is more convenient for you to go to the supermarket and you can check, right? So for example, if I want to go on Wednesday at three o'clock in the afternoon, I can check and I can see if it's red, means that there's already a lot of people at, at that time. So I can also help by being more transparent for that supermarket to use the resources and capability in more balanced way, right? And you know, the truth is many, many people are opening like this because they say, well, in Latin America, we're accustomed to do these lines and they will do it. It just will take somebody, a company, to begin to do it differently for people that don't want to make a line anymore to go to that supermarket because nobody is going to be, oh, great, this is a Wednesday and now I have to go and spend an hour and a half waiting in the parking lot to get into the supermarket. So of course, now comes the next step after COVID-19 is with those initiatives in which we use technology to discover and solve problems, to learn and see what creates value and capture value, what needs to be established as an ongoing and business as usual, new way of doing business, and what was an interesting idea only for the pandemic and solve specific problems that existed at that time. And that requires executive and employees working in collaboration to learn from cycles in which you become a lot more creative in what happens. So the next step is understanding how do I want to get there? And this is really answering the research puzzle what we have done in the past, but we have to understand that we have to be clear about what is our conceptual guidance, paying attention that you have covered the relevant literature, not only about digital transformation, but what we learned about prior crises. What do we know about our own countries and the use of technology prior to the pandemic? that we define the boundaries of your study so you are not going all over the place in what seems interesting and you're going to fish in expeditions. Clearly stating your research question and providing sensible theoretical bases that are going to help you in explaining your findings. And finally, 
in answering the what do I need to do as researchers, we have to be aware that maybe you have to adapt because the way you used to do research with some of the traditional way of accessing and analyzing data might have become more complicated or being close off completely. In my own work, I was doing research in the health industry here at the University of Colorado, and I had to replace my initial on field study methodology that I was applying and begin to use digital diaries and video walkthroughs and social media communication to collect the data because I was not able to come into hospitals anymore. But, but I also caution researchers not to seek to do research on individuals, companies, and societies that are simply looking for the latest hot technology offering a quick payback. That's too superficial, and you will waste the opportunity. Instead, now that we are still in the bench, right, in the lockdown, you have to be observing which companies, which leaders are really committed to thinking about the broad strategic direction and how digital technology can help real problems of this new post-pandemic era. And here, I hope you find it useful in answering the what do I need to do you need to reflect at least in this type of questions. How could I apply the traditional tools and techniques that I use in my research to the cur current circumstances? How can these tools and techniques that have been used in crisis research before can be applied in the post-academic era in information systems to generate novel insights. Because that literature already exists and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. In my research, as I was mentioning, I, I was already collecting data about the health system here in Denver and it was interrupted. And maybe you guys are in the same way. And then it's important to understand how can I pivot toward new opportunities based on the data that you already collected, because you probably collected with a different study in mind. But now it provides an opportunity to maybe pivot into something more interesting. How this pandemic affect the availability and quality of data? how the social, economic responses, and new norms after COVID-19 might influence what type of data collection analysis we really can do and which ones we cannot. So I hope you find these ideas useful, but I want to finish this to really remind you with the big pictures. Really, as researchers, we have the great privilege and responsibility to impact individuals, business, and society by giving knowledge to push forward. This is a lot more interesting and more fascinating than just thinking about the next article that I'm going to put. So yes, we have a lot of work to do. But I don't know about you, I feel that this is a fascinating new opportunity to do exciting new research at the crossroad between the COVID recovery and digital transformation across multiple levels of analysis, including individuals, organizations, 
and societies. So with that, I have nothing else to say, but muchas gracias. I hope it was useful. Enjoy the rest of the ISLA conference. Take the opportunity to enjoy with all the things that, are, that were terrible about COVID, this open, very exciting opportunity to be doing research these days. So congratulations and be healthy and safe. Take care. ¿Qué pasó? Si tú que me decías que yo nunca podría, pues mira que aquí estoy, trayendo papería con el sombo 21, vengo sábado y vacilando, y a todo el mundo aquí estoy invitando, para que te agarres.